Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Pause the TV. I know it's been a little while. I've been very busy in real life, and as you've seen on my channel, I've been trying to make different types of content that's been taking up a lot of my time. But when I saw this come across my Twitter feed, I knew I had to talk about it. So if you've been keeping up with the channel or with Ouija Pie, the YouTube creator, you know that three Google Docs have come out so far about him, saying that he has been predatory and abusive to ex-girlfriends and talking to girls who are very, very young. Well, my boy Hush Mush here, who put out the last three Google Docs, has come out with a fourth one. And he tweeted, Hello, my name is Hush Mush. I come again to release a fourth document on Ouija Pie. This document has absolute proof of him being a groomer, another victim, as well as an analysis of his tactics and behavior towards his victims. Now, when I saw this, I wasn't really surprised knowing that he's had six plus victims in the past, but I want to jump into this document and really see exactly what they're talking about. So as soon as we load it up here, it says there is another victim that spoke out about her experiences being only 14 years old. We've gotten full confirmation that he is a PDF file. A response video is likely never to be released. Ouija uses the same tactics for every victim, and due to the amount of victims who spoke out about their experiences with Ouija there could be many other victims who haven't spoken up about their experiences. Now, I just want to preface this by saying, in my past two videos about Ouija there have been some victims that came out in the comment section, and I just want to say, if there are any other victims that have yet to speak out, the comment section is a safe space, and if any victims do speak out in the comments, everyone be very respectful. And if you are not, your comments will be deleted. All right, with that being said, let's move on. So first and foremost, we have the seventh victim. In late 2022, Ouija Pie made a vague tweet on his old deleted Twitter account. In this tweet, he's seemingly referring to a 14 year old that he just started talking to, which is the seventh victim. And his tweet says, and I quote, I can't stop thinking about them. Please help. I am not normal. Why am I like this? The document continues, it's worth noting that a good amount of the tweets made on this account can be connected to Ouija Pie's victims, which is most likely why the entire account was deleted after the second document was released. Luckily, though, the account has been archived to an extent on the Wayback Machine, and there is a link. Now, I'm just giving you a heads up, a lot of the stuff on this Twitter account is extremely cringy, but I'm going to read some of them and we can see how easily they do connect to the victims. So here Ouija Pie says, I'm just so tired of waiting, waiting for nothing. I have everything I could possibly need except for someone to love me and get rid of my loneliness. I'm here, I'm waiting, what else am I supposed to do? This hurts so much. Another tweet reads, and I'm just watching myself slowly growing up, and it hurts. It's been two years, two years of literal nothingness. Soon I'm going to be 18, but I feel like I'm 16 because nothing happened for the past two years. And very soon I won't ever be able to experience that ever again. Now, just to preface, this, these tweets are from over a year ago, almost two years ago now. So Ouija Pie was younger, he wasn't 18 yet when he tweeted these. But it seems to me that what he's going through is someone who got really, really famous at a young age, and now he's 18, 19 years old, and he feels like he never got to be a kid. So he's going after these girls who are 12, 13, 14 years old to try and relive being a kid again. Back to the document. According to the 14-year-old, the conversation she had with him started platonic. Unfortunately, just like other victims, they quickly became romantic, and he eventually confessed to her on the 13th of October. And we see the screenshots of their conversation here. He's asking if she'll be his girlfriend. She's saying that that's kind of soon. She asks about his ex. And he says his ex cheated on him and that it hurt. And he dropped out of school. And he's just been going through a really bad time. And that seems to be the case with him. He always throws a pity party. And the victim says here, and I quote, He told me on the 13th of October. I was young, 14 years old, and naive, so I didn't think much and accepted to be his girlfriend. At first, I didn't want to be anything more than a friendship with him, but he told me about his exes and I felt bad for him. The only reason she stayed with him throughout the relationship is because she felt bad for him due to his constant guilt tripping. It's worth noting that he uses this tactic with every victim. Ouija Pie became tired of talking to her on Twitter, so he made an excuse and moved the conversation over to Instagram DMs. And he says here, his Twitter stopped giving him notifications, can we move to Instagram instead? The victim says, so after some days he told me his Twitter got an error and couldn't send his notifications properly. So he decided to move to Instagram. And we can see in this screenshot, there's a lot of voice messages being tossed back and forth. The victim continues, when we talked on Instagram, it's like his personality completely changed. He wasn't sweet but became really bold. We used to sext, and I was fine about it because I thought we're far away and can't physically do anything to me. But sometimes things got a little uncomfortable. Like he told me to m over his pictures, told me to moan for him, called me mommy, 
so I'll moan for him, and when I refused, he moaned for me. The document says after she refused, he eventually started sending her voice messages of himself moaning instead, which we can see here. Eventually, Ouija started sending her pictures of himself half naked, as well as a photo of his tip, quote unquote. This caused the victim to block him, which is understandable. And the victim says here, after some days, I don't remember how many days, my memory sucks, out of nowhere, he sent me a picture of him shirtless. I was scared and uncomfortable, so I told him not to do that again, and he agreed. And after a few days, I was drawing, and he sent me a message on Instagram and told me he wanted to send me nudes. I refused, but after like 30 minutes, I checked Instagram again, and he sent me two pictures and one voice message. The first picture was him sitting on his chair with only underwear. The second picture was just blurry dark pink. I think it was his tip. And the voice message of noises of him math. I was super scared and without hesitation, I deleted the whole conversation and blocked him on Instagram. Now, this is a completely normal reaction to have when you get messages like this. Any unsolicited dick pics or pictures of you doing anything sexual is just a no-no. That's a, that's, a, that's a huge no, no matter who you're talking to, let alone a 14-year-old person. When she confronted him about it, Ouija Pai managed to guilt trip his way out of talking about pictures he sent, and eventually, they started talking again, but on Discord. That night, I calmed down and talked to him on Twitter. I asked him why he did that, and he acted like he knew nothing about it. And I kept asking and asking and told him to answer, and this is what I got back. He told me what he was going through. I felt bad, so I didn't ask for explanation on the nudes anymore. And we see him just kind of guilt tripping her more, asking for more pics of her, just like, I never take pics. Can I have more pics of you? You look different in every picture. Like, just begging her. She says, after a short while, I forgave him and we went back together. After that, we talked on Discord. In the Discord DMs, you can see Ouija Pie directly asking for pictures of her over and over again, which, again, you can see here. After a while, he still kept asking for more pictures after I sent him many pics. I told him that made me uncomfortable and he told me that he would unalive himself. And we can see that here. I'm sorry, but kind of uncomfortable now, she says. And he says, um, okay, I'm going to unalive myself, bye. Which, again, just prime guilt tripping tactics. Now, to backpedal a little bit, on page 17 of document 3, which is the one we covered in our last video, one of Ouija Pai's exes found out that he was following two minors on Instagram. This caused him to threaten the ex so that she would keep quiet. And here's a little excerpt of document three saying after they broke up, his ex found out that he made a new Instagram account, apparently to talk to younger girls. When his ex tried to warn the young girls that the age gap was inappropriate and that it could be dangerous for them, Lucas contacted her, apparently threatening to hospitalize her so she wouldn't expose this info to anybody. And we found out that one of those younger girls he was talking to is this seventh victim. And she says here, also, I found this somewhere. The younger girls slash young girls here included me. One night I got a notification on Instagram that someone sent me a DM and that DM was Ouija Pai's ex trying to warn her. And here are those messages of Ouija Pai's ex contacting victim number seven. The ex says, hi, be careful who you talk to online, please. You look so young and kind and innocent. If you want to know more, come and let's talk. I don't want to scare you, but yeah. She goes on to say, I knew someone that you follow and I kind of have several bad memories with that person. Very bad, almost kind of illegal. So please be really careful who you talk to on the internet. And victim number seven says she'll be careful. And the ex continues to say this person is a YouTuber, you know, kind of hinting that it's him, not really saying his name, but saying just be careful who you talk to, especially if they are a YouTuber, kind of famous, you know, might make Mario videos, that kind of thing. So victim seven screenshotted those messages and sent them to Ouija Pie. And Ouija Pie goes off. He starts freaking out and acting very violent. He says, I'm going to kill her. I can't believe she had the audacity to say that. She's the one who kept doing shit to me and driving me insane. Literally, I forgave her every time and I didn't do anything about it. She fucking dares say that about me. And he's going off, saying that he's going to hospitalize her and unalive himself and just going crazy. And below, we have Ouija Pai telling victim number seven, who again is 14 years old, what to say back to his ex. And that response is, it's your last chance before I fuck you up. After talking with him for nine months on Discord, she ended up breaking up with him due to Ouija Pai neglecting her. This was most likely because she was uncomfortable sending him constant pictures of herself. Of course, the only reason she stayed with him so long was because of his guilt tripping. Below is just another example of this. And we can see him sending her messages saying, I have more problems than just crappy parents. I'm unhappy. I'm lonely. All my friends use me. Every time I get a girlfriend, the same things happen. My YouTube channel's dying. My ADHD is making me not do videos. I keep getting sick and having headaches. My parents keep yelling at me. I'm starting to get poor. I'm getting old. I'm not good at anything. Just 
literally back to back to back to back saying all this, guilt tripping her into staying with him and talking to him. And before we end this section, here is once again proof that this is Ouija Pie's real account. And there's some of his account details posted here that match document number two and number three, so that we can tell this is really him sending these messages. Now the next section of this document is DMs with Idris IDK. And this is one of Ouija Pie's close friends, or used to be one of his close friends, that Ouija Pie kind of opened up to and talked to with not a lot of filters. So we got a lot of information from this conversation. And there is video evidence of the conversation here where they scroll through all the DMs, but it is in French. There are screenshots of it translated into English here, but we're just going to go through certain parts of it and talk about what they mean. So in this conversation, Ouija Pie says, and I quote, this Roblox girl, who was one of the victims, never was 12 as far as I know. So she is lying about her age. Already the fact that she's lying about her age, doesn't that already wake you guys up? Now the document states here, no matter if she lied about being 12, it is a known fact that you stayed in contact with the victim after she said she was 12, lying to your friends about cutting ties with her, thus putting you in the wrong and a PDF file. You two exchange nudes, and that is wrong considering that fact. This is very true. If this girl told Ouija Pie she is 12, then they continued a conversation and sent nudes, then after that, he realized that she wasn't actually 12, that doesn't get him off the hook. He did all that, under the impression that she was 12 years old, which is incredibly wrong. Ouija Pie says here, speaking about another victim, I just realized, if she's 14 right now, that's a three-year age gap. It's not four or five. And the document clarifies, no, she is 13 right now, turning 14 this year, and you turn 19 this year. That makes it a five-year age gap. She had admitted to being 12 in December of 2022, while you were 17. According to the DSM-5, a person who is sexually attracted to a prepubescent child, 13 and under, while being above 16 years of age with at least a five-year age gap, is a PDF file. Now, Ouija Pie is trying to defend himself in this conversation, trying to say the ages weren't really that bad, and, you know, I just thought she was 12, she wasn't actually 12, and this other girl was 14, even though she was really 13. But he's trying to defend these indefensible actions. And these documents are doing a good job at saying why they are indefensible. Now, another of Ouija Pie's old friends, Resprune, put out a video of them having a conversation about all of this and what's going on. I'm going to link that video in the description, and you guys definitely should watch it as there's some very good evidence and information there. This document concludes by saying, Going off of Ouija Pie's actions, his numerous victims, and his refusal to acknowledge his actions, Ouija Pie is a genuine online predator. He constantly manipulates victims using the same tactics on each one to get them to send nudes, moaning audios, and whatever other immoral content he desires at the current moment. He uses his status as a content creator as a power dynamic to exert his influence onto his younger people and guilt trips them in many ways, most notably through threats and emotional manipulation. Moreover, he shuts out any form of criticism to try and portray himself in a good light from the comment section. It is very clear that he does not want to take any accountability for his actions and even justifies them to this day. There are no excuses for his actions. He is a dangerous individual who does not deserve his audience. And I have to say, as someone who has read all of the Google documents and who has made two videos about Ouija Pie in the past, I have to agree with this conclusion. Someone who has such a big audience, even if they are young themselves, has a power dynamic over their audience. They almost have this celebrity status about them. And if Ouija Pie, a lonely 18, 19 year old, has a tons and tons and tons of fans, a lot of them being younger girls, he has to be held accountable for what he does with those fans. Whether he likes it or not, he is the adult in this situation. He is the grown individual who is talking to these children, and he's manipulating them into being in a relationship with him, to sexting with him, to sending him pictures, to taking videos with him, to doing all this stuff that is incredibly morally and legally wrong. But as always, this is an ongoing situation. I will keep you guys updated if anything new comes out. Let me know what you guys think about this situation in the comments. And until next time, stay safe out there.